quiet. Jesus said, hey, if they're quiet, the rocks will cry out. Let's not let the rocks have to do that. Come on. I'm praising the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm short. I praise when I'm doubting. Come on, praise. I praise when I'm number. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the waters. Oh, my enemies drowned in. for eight o'clock. You guys feeling good? Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm going to let you have a seat just for a couple minutes. Catch your breath because I expect when we continue singing to hear more of that. You good, good with that? Yeah. So you're tired already. <laughs> that was it, right? I got five minutes this morning. Um, so um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Sandy and I'm one of the pastors here and I just want to say good morning to you and I hope that I'm not the first person that said good morning to you. I hope you've heard three or four or eight or ten good mornings uh, this morning. But I just want you to know that I am excited about today. And we are in the second week of our series, Make Room for More. 
And after going through Pastor Steve's slides with him this morning, I am really excited for you to hear what he has to say. But you're going to have to wait just a little bit to hear that, okay? You're just going to have to wait just a little bit. But um, we've got a great service planned for you today. We're going to have you here for a little over an hour. And if this is your first time in church, we just want you to know a little bit about who we are and what to expect today. And so if you are visiting with us, thank you so much for being here. We are honored that you would choose to be here and be our guest this morning. If you're watching us online from wherever you're at, we're so glad that you tuned in and joined us. So as we go through the service today, we want you to know a couple of things. First of all, we are a church that's about real love and real people. And where we get that is from this. Jesus said this in Mark chapter 12, that we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourself. And so what we're all about is loving God and loving people. And I hope today that you experience people on this platform that are modeling loving God and entering into his presence, that you hear the truth of the word of God today. And I, I'm hoping that you just encounter the real love of the people around you because what we try to do here at DC3 is just try to be authentic and real and be ourselves. And so if you're visiting with us this morning, all we ask of you is just be yourself. We don't expect anything from you. We don't want anything from you. We want this service to be a gift to you, and we want to bless you. And so I just want you to know that you are welcome to sit back and observe. If you want to stand and sing and participate in what's going on, we are good with that too. Um, but as we go through the service today, and maybe you've got questions and you're looking for more information about who we are and what we're all about, in the back of the seat pocket in front of you is a connection card. You can fill that out and drop it off at our giving center or our blue tent. Or if you're tech savvy, there's a QR code on there. You can take your phone out and scan it and fill it out online. And there's a bunch of links on there as well that can take you directly to some information that maybe you're looking for. And as we go through our service today, um, I just want you to know that today is a really good day because if you're fairly new to DC3 and maybe you want to take a deep dive into what we're all about, today after the third service, we are having our discovery um, one and two. And so that's an opportunity for you to come and meet some of our team and to just get a real deep dive onto who we are, where we've been, what we're all about, and where we're going. And so we have lunch provided for you and we have child care provided. So um, there's really no excuses. I mean, those are the two things on Sunday that you would need, right? You, you still have time. We'll be short. You have time for a nap afterwards, but we've got lunch and child care provided. So we want to invite you uh, to come back. It'll start about 1.15. So a um, couple of other things. want you to know that if you are visiting today, that we will not pass an offering plate. We won't ask you for money or take up a collection. And that's because we want this service to be a gift to you. And we believe that people that love God give out of the abundance of their heart. And so we create opportunities for that, um, like the QR code on your... Am I back? Okay. Um, I, I must have hit a dead spot. Or, or so, John, did you mute me and tell me that's enough? Uh, so, so on that QR code, there is a link to give, but also we have a giving center in the lobby and other opportunities because we want to create opportunities for people to give, but we never want it to be forced or a requirement. We want, we believe that people give just out of the abundance of their heart. And so, um, how many parents do we have in the room? All right, we got a bunch. Okay, pretty good for eight o'clock. Okay, so I'm going to talk specifically to parents that have kids that are finishing kindergarten this year or, or up through fifth grade. And we have something exciting. You may have seen it on social media or in your email, but we have VBS coming June 3rd to June 7th. I think I said that right. Am I right? Yes, I got that right. See, I, I promised Megan I would try to get the information right, but I didn't guarantee. So June 3rd to 7th is VBS, which stands for Very Best Summer. It will be, I hope, the best week of your kid's summer. And so registration is open today. You can pull out your phone and scan that QR code. Or if you go straight out to the lobby, Jennifer Carland is out there with a table to answer your questions and uh, has a QR code there. But we have a week set aside that we want to take your kids and we want to invest in them at, through teaching, through games, through fun crafts, through intentional small group time, through learning about missions, and, and being able to 
be a part of that, and we just want to take a week. Wish we had two. Sometimes we get to the end of the week, and we're like, ah, I wish we had one more week. But we just want to spend an intentional week with your kids and disciple them and help them grow in their relationship with Jesus. So I want to encourage you to jump on that because registration will fill up. So take out your phone or stop by the table and see Jen on your way out. So are you guys ready to sing a little bit more? All right. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Uh, with me and say good morning to two or three people around you and we're going to continue singing in just a minute. Thank you all for being here. going to continue to worship together in music as well and in message. So let's just join it together. Let's just take some time and dwell on the truth of this song. is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaken, well, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't. Oh, he won't. But I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense, so I won't be
Pastor Eddie and I get this opportunity to send personal videos to those who give their life to Jesus and to walk them through these steps. What's next? What do I do? How do I keep doing this? How do I grow my roots deeper? And I remember the very words saying, man, this is how, this is what we want to do is we want to take this new faith and we want to grow these roots so deep that when things start coming at us like they will, when the wind starts blowing hard like it will, these roots are going to be so grounded that I'm going to be standing tall because I have a faith in something so much bigger than what this world can throw at me. So last night, when we start hearing about drones and missiles going toward Israel, there's a lot of fear that went on, right? But the roots are deep. And maybe, maybe you're, you're trying to figure out how do I grow these roots deep? Let me tell you this, there's a lot of really good ways to do this, but the best way to start is by saying, he won't fail me. Amen. And not like going, he won't fail me, I'm pretty sure. Or just think in your head, that's cool, he won't fail me. It's like speaking it, he won't fail me. Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand, right? Come on. And let me tell you, if you need to grow those roots deeper, we are here for you. We've got a, a prayer wall out there where people are writing names down of people who need roots to start in Jesus. But we're here. We want to watch your roots grow because I need my roots growing deeper. I need a firm foundation. Come on, sing this with me. Christ is my firm foundation. Say it like you mean it. The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken Everything around me But I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus 
He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail? Come on, say it. He won't. I'm going to let you say it one more time just to lock it in. You ready? He won't. Oh, yeah. Because he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. Take me to 
worship you. We thank you for your providence, Lord, that these songs were chosen way before the incidents that happened yesterday. I just feel, as I was reading this morning in Matthew 24, and just for my own heart, Jesus said this how many, how many years ago? Thousands of years ago. He said, don't panic. These are my paraphrased words. But don't panic. Nations are going to rise against nations. There will be earthquakes and famines. People's love will grow cold. There will be a spirit of hate almost permeating the culture. But don't panic. These things have to come. They're the birth pains that have to come in order for the return of Jesus. And then in Hebrews I believe it's chapter 12. It says, I am shaking everything that can be shaken. Creation must be shaken so that the kingdom of heaven, the one that cannot be shaken, will come. That is what we are waiting for. So I say to my own soul and to our own souls today, the only way that we can say he won't fail, that Christ is my firm foundation, is because we know the way, the truth, and the life. We know his word. We are intimately acquainted with him. And so when troubles come, and they will come, it's not if they come, it's when they come. In 1 Peter it says that don't be surprised by the fiery trials that you are enduring. This happening to all the people, all the believers all around the world. Don't be so self-focused that all you can see is your own stuff and like something is wrong with me. I must be doing something wrong. No, maybe you are. Let Holy Spirit speak to you about that, right? Maybe you are. Maybe you're in sin. I don't know. But maybe it is that he is trying to build a faith in us that will last until he returns. Because many will grow cold, the Bible says. And I don't want to be one of them. And if you are a part of DC3 family, I'm going to fight for you. To not let your love grow cold. To spur you on. To say, we can do this. We have the kingdom that will not be shaken. The only way we build that faith and that trust is to have the winds come, to feel like you're drowning. And it's been a long time since we have sung that song and I just felt the, the Holy Spirit say, sing the song, pull this thing out for today. And as I was singing it, I thought, Lord, this is the dangerous prayer that I prayed years and years ago and look where you have brought me. He's so faithful. Would you test him? Would you test him in this? that he can be proven faithful, that he has so much good for you, that he is a generous God and he is for you, but that often comes through the trials of life, through the recognition that I can't do this on my own, right? We talked about it last week, surrender. So Lord, we surrender again to you, that you would lead us into waters where we feel like we're drowning because then we know the goodness and the faithfulness and the power of our God. And you're not some masochistic God. You're not an egomaniacal God, they say. It is because you know what's best for us. Your way is the best way. So renew our minds in that today, Lord. Lead us where our feet could never wander because we want to be close to you. We want to know you intimately. We want to know a kingdom that will not be shaken. We want to know a faith that is strong and steady. It doesn't mean we don't get blown. It doesn't mean the rains don't come. It means exactly that they will come and we will stand strong because we know the way, the truth, and the life. We know the Holy Spirit is our helper, our counselor, our advocate. Thank you, God. You are a generous God towards us. You are for us. We speak your truth and your life over each ear that is here. 
And as I pray continually for myself, may I have ears to hear, may I have eyes to see, and a heart to respond to what the Spirit is saying today. In Jesus' holy and awesome name we pray, amen, amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Would you give God all of the praise? Everything you have, Lord, we give to you. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated as we continue on. My mom had a dream. And in the dream, there was this beautiful building. And it was filled to capacity with people there to just worship. And she saw a rainbow over the building, signifying God's promise. And during that same time, a board member at the time had a vision. And he could see that if we were able to purchase this property, there would be like a bridge between the church property and the high school. And kids and leaders and people from the church would just be going back and forth seamlessly because we were going to be a light in our community and a light to the surrounding schools. When I was 10, my parents decided to accept the pastorate of a church in Punta Gorda, which was then First Assembly of God. It was a small little church. So we moved our family to Punta Gorda and my parents pastored that church for the next 22 years. So a couple of years after moving, they decided as a small congregation that they wanted to take a huge step of faith and purchase 10 acres of property and build a building where they could grow and expand as a church. So that is what became Abundant Life Assembly. And that is the current building that DC3 actually meets in now. So we were in that building for 20 years. And during that time, my parents, my brother and I, my whole family, we just poured our entire lives into the ministry. We poured our whole selves into the church, into discipling people and raising up people and into the ministry, serving our community. And over some time, it became apparent that we weren't going to be able to stay open as a church any longer, that we were going to have to close Abundant Life. And I just remember all these years, 20 plus years, pouring out, giving, serving. And one day I came in the building and I just remember walking the floor and it was the last day that I was going to be able to be in this building, the last day that I would be able to walk these floors and pray as I had done for two decades. And I walked the floors and I said, God, why does it have to close? Why do we have to stop? After DC3 moved into the building, uh, my mom drove by one day and she left a note for Steve and Sarah. And she just wanted to express to them how glad she was that this became a church, that they were able to come in and be a part of the fulfillment of the years of labor and dreams and prayers and visions that we had had as a family. About a year and a half later, Eddie and I felt called to attend a different church, Deep Creek Community Church. And I thought, God, I know we're called to this church. Like, I know we're called to be here, but this is honestly the last place I wanna be right now. But nonetheless, we were called. So we came and we attended and we sat in chairs Sunday after Sunday for an entire year. We would come on Sunday, sit in the chairs and leave. And Pastor Steve spoke a message. It was in a series called CrossFit. Oh, and you something on the card that you needed to leave at the cross. And to be honest, I don't even know what I wrote on the card. Couldn't even tell you. But I brought my card to the front steps, but I couldn't just walk away. I fell down at the steps and I just kind of melted into this puddle of tears. And I just poured it all out to God in the grief for everything that I felt like I had lost and my family had lost and all the dreams that had died. And when you have a dream that's birthed in your heart, you think, okay, I'm gonna see this. Like, I'm gonna see this come to pass and it's gonna happen like this. 
It's going to be seamless. We're going to see it. We're going to step out in faith. But it's not necessarily that way. Because God has such a bigger plan and such a bigger purpose. And it's his kingdom and it's his work. It's not about any particular church that I might be involved in. It's not about any particular work that I might be doing. If I step out in faith, God's promises are true. So I may never see those things come to pass exactly like I thought they would, but they will as a part of his kingdom. And so when I sit here now, and when I see a building full of people worshiping God, service after service after service on a Sunday, and I'm like, if this isn't vision coming to reality, I don't know what is. This is such a privilege to be a part of all of the years of the prayer and pouring into and giving that my family did. And even though they didn't get to see this dream become a reality, I get to be here and I get to see this and experience this and just get a little taste of everything that God had in mind through all those years. And it's not over yet because there's so much more that he has in mind. And again, it's his kingdom, it's his work, it's all his. So it's all for him and for his glory. And that means more to me than probably I could ever express in my words. That is just knowing the details of that story as I do. So I just want to do something really special. And Sarah and I were talking about this. I think she even called Marla after we watched this. And I'm sure we've done it from time to time over the years. But here's something that you need to know today. There are a lot of people that attend our church that were a part of Abundant Life Assembly of God. And I'm from the Assemblies of God, and I'm going to tell you a little story about the backstory of us getting this building. But can I do this this morning for all of those that are here that attended Abundant Life Assembly of God? Can we, as a DC3 family, as an extension of that family, can we just honor them this morning for all that they did through this place? Amen. Eddie. It's an honor, man, to think about, and I got to tell you, you and I married some pretty extraordinary women. Yes, we did marry up. And to, to know what Marla went through as a pastor's daughter, a children's pastor here, all the years of investment, she, Marla told me about, they used to do sidewalk Sunday school where they went out and ministered to kids all throughout this community to the poor and those that were, would not come to church, but they're co going to them. There are souls and kingdom investments that will not, will not even know the scope of that until we get into heaven. And here's the deal. We're just carrying on the kingdom work. Everybody say kingdom. Is this, this whole make room for more thing is so much bigger than a church name like DC3 or Abundant Life. This is Jesus' church. It's his church, it's his kingdom, and we are privileged to be a part of that. Now, I got to tell you, in 2011, when we were uh, starting to grow a little bit over at the high school and God was doing amazing things and, and just something very odd happened where I heard that this building was for sale. And I knew Pastor Postel. My dad had been uh, very much in the same time of ministry. And I knew this church was a very effective and powerful church for so many years. And I was kind of like blown away that that was all happening. Then I kind of learned some of the backstory. And, and I will, I'm just, Sarah will tell you, when we started thinking about the reality of purchasing, purchasing this building, I struggled with that. I'm like, this just doesn't seem right for me to come into a building that was such a blessed church, with such a blessed pastor and his family and congregation, and now that we're kind of coming in to take it over after that ministry has evolved and, and moved on and they lost the building through just an amazingly hard circumstances of health, the hurricane, Pastor Postel uh, had some really bad health issues. 
And before you know it, they could not afford to keep the building. But I, I, there was a day, I remember when Sarah said, we, you know, well, I come from the Assembly of God, and we would call him Sister Mary. I remember when, when Marla's mom left us that letter, that note, blessing us for buying this building and thanking us for continuing the vision. There was a board member that Marla referenced on the video that's now a board member at our church. He was a pastor there, Pastor Rick. And I remember him sharing with me in tears the fact that now as the church began to grow and they begin to attend that God was carrying on the vision that they had seen. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I went, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing because so many people invested in this. So many of our amazing family members today are faithful warriors from those years, and I am thankful for those. And if you're new today and, and maybe you haven't been around in a, a couple of weeks, I'm honored to include to you today, before we get started, this amazing journey that we're on. And so you may have seen people with these books. If you have your books, hold them up right now. Somebody, we got a lot of good students in here. This is our Make Room for More journey guide. And we encourage you this morning, if you don't have one of these, you can take notes in this. There's amazing devotionals. Look through it. I mean, you want to get one of these. Put your name in it. This is our journey guide on this new journey that we're in. And I want to give you a key scripture that inspired us for this as we talk this morning about making room for more. Isaiah 54, 2 says this. Enlarge the sight of your tent. Enlarge the sight of your tent to make room for more children. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare them. Lengthen your tent ropes and make your pegs, your stakes firm in the ground. Now, Sandy's waving at me. I ask, are we going to hand these out? All right. If you need one of these, grab these right now. I'm sorry to interrupt there. If you need one, if you don't have one, if you'll just raise your hand, that we have some people that have come around to do that. That's my mistake. I asked uh, and got misinformation this morning. My bad. You'll see a lot of the information we're covering. And we're actually on week two of this series. So if you want to turn there with us in your books and grab your Bible. And we're going to be studying some great scripture this morning. Isaiah says, enlarge the side of your tent to make room for more children. Everybody say, make room. How many love to have more children? Amen to that. And we're talking about both spiritual children who are born again and physical children. We love kids. He says, stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare them. Lengthen your tent ropes and make your pegs, your stakes firm in the ground. Guys, today in the world... Even after I watched the attacks on Israel last night and I was praying, my heart was broken. I was thinking about Hank and Debbie that are over there and they sent a note out this morning. Some of you may have gotten it from their ministry that they actually could see the drones coming in, the missiles coming in as the Iron Dome uh, would, would uh, eliminate those. And how many are just amazed at the miracle of God to protect them from all of that? How many know that Israel is God's nation? Amen to that. But we are seeing people hungry for something. People know that the world is in a peculiar place right now. I was talking to Justin and Casey last night who are, reading, who are leading a circle uh, studying the book of Revelations. And people are just hungry to know about what is happening in the world. What does the Bible say about the last days? People are hungry because the world system is empty. It has its moments of fullness and happiness, and it, the, the Bible calls it for a season, but ultimately it's God's way that is the best way. Amen to that? Tell somebody, God's the best. People are looking for something that will truly satisfy this, their soul, and that, my friends, is Jesus. If you're new to church today, Jesus he is the way, come on, he's the truth, and he's the what? He's the life, man. And I'm just so thankful that we get a chance to share Jesus Christ with our community. 
And after much prayer, after much study over the last year and a half, after rigorous conversations and levels of leadership throughout this church, we are stepping out in faith to make room for more. There's a lot of people at 8 o'clock this morning. I'm like, man, they got it. Guys, three things we're going to do is more love. Everybody say more love. We're going to do, we're going to have, we're going to, we're bringing more people. We're seeing people get saved. We're seeing people connecting to Jesus Christ, rededicating their life. And when we do that, we're going to see more impact in our community. I do not want to be a part of a church that just comes on Sunday morning, checks its box, has some potluck dinners, and we're done. I love potluck dinners. I had one last night. I ate way too much. But there is more than eating of the world's food and the world's pleasures. We are called for something so much more. I love to see lives transformed. And our number one goal, guys, is we want to see people change for Jesus Christ. That is it. And we're going to continue to do that. How we want to do that is for two ways, guys. Number one, we want all the people that call DC3 their home to be 100% engaged. Everybody say 100%. 100%, baby, there it is. We want you to be engaged. You say, Steve, I haven't been here. How do I get engaged? Well, first you take a ring. No, that's not it. Uh, Somebody got that. It's too early. The The primary ways we want you to be engaged, number one is we want you to pray. We need you to pray for us. We need you to pray for the church. If this is not led by the Holy Spirit, it is going to be a failure. Even no matter what it looks like, and we need the Holy Spirit. So we're asking you to pray for us. And today, as you leave, you can grab uh, what we call it. If you have your journey guide, you can grab a journey piece. It's a little key. Put it somewhere you can see it and pray for us. The second way we want you to engage is we want you to pray, God, how can I be, like, extraordinarily generous? How can I be generous? We are going to be taking everything that people give to the kingdom of God over the next two years, and we're going to create one fund, one sort of, Lord, this is your storehouse so that we can do those three things. It's going to be an amazing goal as we have a goal over the next two years to raise $9.6 million. Everybody say million. Does that, did that scare anybody when you saw it last week? Well, I'm glad you're honest. What's wrong with you? No, I'm just kidding. When we started talking about this, we went, God, that's a big But here's what God has said to me. So was the Red Sea. So was the desert they had to cross. I think the Egyptian empire was pretty big when the Israelites. Amen. I think raising Lazarus from the dead after four days was looked pretty impossible to the world. Amen to that. Now, we're going to be talking a lot more about that side of things when it comes But stay with me, because I'm going to show you in amazing ways over the next two weeks how God is going to provide through extraordinary generosity as God grows our hearts in giving. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. And while the presence of the Holy Spirit is critical, guys, you know we need the provision for the vision. And that happens when we who love God and love what God is doing at DC3, we say, Lord, I want to invest in what you're doing in people's hearts and minds. And I got to tell you, some of y'all that are sending me emails, calling me, talking to me, and just going, Steve, I'm in, man. What God has done in my family, what God has done in my life, I'm just going, God, you are so good. We're sitting uh, just over the last couple weeks and numerous times as we presented this to people. We had a class Tuesday night. One of the things Sarah said to me was, Steve, I am in awe at how people trust God, and watch this, trust us as God's leaders. Y'all, this morning, take out your notes. We're going to talk about trust, this word, trust me. And I want you to know as a pastor of DC3, Sarah and I 
we take that responsibility extremely seriously. I mean extremely seriously. And in fact, it's one of the reasons that I debated with my own soul and with God about, God, do you really want us to lead this? Because we're a team. But I am honored to speak from the Word of God. And I'm honored to tell you today, if you're, if you're trusting Steve and Sarah to make sure this project is a success, you're trusting the wrong person. Now, if you're trusting Steve and Sarah to hear from God and do what God says, then you're trusting the right thing. Turn to somebody and say, we're praying for them. Amen to that? Because we need your prayers. I believe that God is speaking, and he keeps showing up in amazing ways. And we, as we enter this visionary generosity initiative to build the kingdom, to build a building to support kingdom work, to, to build other ministries through more impact of giving to other ministries. And you can check all that out in your book. Here's the truth this morning if you're taking notes. We're all in a building project. Tell somebody right now, you're in a building project. Okay? The building project is this. We are building based on trust. You are building something based on where your trust is. Last week we talked about surrender. We talked about submission to God. That is absolutely the first step to say, God, I surrender my life. I give it to you. But there's a next step. Everybody say surrender. Now trust. I surrendered my singleness to my beautiful wife. Right? Babe, I love you. Will you marry me? I want to be one flesh. This is going to be awesome. I'm going to be your knight in shining armor. Woo! But then something happened after this engagement. After the engagement, then trust begins. Trust begins. And the question I want to ask you this morning is this. Man, I pray. We had such a great response of people surrendering to God. But the question number two of this series is, do I, ask yourself this question, do I trust God? Do I trust God? First of all, what is trust? Trust, here's how I want to put it for this morning. Trust is the evidence of surrender based on our what? It's one thing to say, I love you, Lord, with all my heart, soul, and mind, and I will follow you. It's another thing to do what? Act like it. You see, Jesus says, if you love me, if you love me, you will do what? Keep my commands. Now, when I read verses like that, I go, man, that seems kind of counterintuitive in a way. Why would you tell me you got to, you know, it's the rebel in me. Every, every fleshly heart wants to be in control, right? Why would God tell me I've got to keep his commands? Why wouldn't you say, if you love me, you will hug me. You will just talk nice to me. You will, no, that's, God is not just warm and fuzzy. He knows what's best for you as a good father would. And he say, the things that I've told you to do, they are for your good, for your benefit. Now go do that if you love me. Because words are cheap if you ain't acting the way you should. Mm. Some people are like, yes, oh, no, wait. <laughs> Truth is the evidence of surrender based, I'm sorry, trust is the evidence of surrender based on our actions. I used to water ski a lot, Brad, I know you did, and I love taking kids out. When you take them in a big lake and people come to Florida especially, what is in Florida in the water? Alligators, yes. You can ride up and down a Peace River and we ski into a Peace River. I can remember every one of my kids when I said, put on the life jacket and jump out the boat. And I'm going to take you on this amazing journey. Jump on the tube, get the skis on, and, and ultimately there's like this... Okay, 
They, and they don't want to get off that. What's really bad is when you start to pull the, wet, the boat away from them and you, you got to get them to the, to the rope. And, and you know, I, I, I couldn't afford like a boom where people are like right beside the boat. But you're, you're, you're saying, okay, just hold on to the rope. Trust me, it'll be okay. Right? And then you get them up and finally you get them skiing and you see this big smile. But I remember the, it, the, one of the scariest times, the first time they fall. And all they do is they come up and they think, alligators. <laughs> How many have been there, right? You're out in the middle of the lake, you're in the middle of the river, and you're just floating there. And the boat's going, Nyeh. and my kids are going, dad's a pretty big jokester. Is he coming back? Right? Do you ever feel that way about the Lord? Seems like the Lord's going here and you're going, Lord, do you see me? But I always am amazed as you come back around and, and you, you're, you're driving strategically and, you, you know, there's a way to do the rope around it. And there's a moment when you get them and you get them in the boat and they, they experience it and they're excited, they're scared. But then you hear them say wonderful words. Here's the best words ever. Let's do it again. And the next time, it's a little less fear and a little more excitement. Guys, for some of you, God is going to call you to jump out of the boat in a way you've never been out of the boat. And this is not about building a building. This is about building people. And this is about building you. God wants to build your trust for him. When you trust in the world, here's what the world says about trust. Trust my system. Trust me. And the world says this, how do I get it? How do I get it? Right? Then the world says, how do I grow it? Right? And then the world, the last part of the world system says this, how do I do what? Guard it. I want to guard it. I want to keep it. I need to build bigger barns. Right? There are some great stories about that. And that can be anything, my reputation, that can be my home, that can be my time, that can be my finances. But then something happens where God comes along and Jesus shows this example. And Jesus says, this is what it means to trust in God. It says, when I get it, when I'm blessed, then, because it's not mine in the first place, I'm going to grow it. We're going to talk about more of that next week. Now, I'm a steward of the blessings of God. Whether it's time, talent, treasure, I want to grow it. I want to invest it. But here's the crazy thing that separates God from the world. From the word, from the world. I get it. Everybody say get it. I grow it. Everybody say grow it. Then what do you do? You give it away. And the world looks at you like, what is wrong with you? You do what? What? But I'm going to tell you, when it comes to striving and, and getting it and growing it and guarding it, go, oh, 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 oh. Or when it comes to being blessed with it and stewing in it and giving it away, which is the least stressful path? Think about it. You choose. And God is saying, if you will trust me, let me show you how to live in a life of giving. I am going to bless your socks off. Everybody look at your socks right now and say, they're about to be gone. Psalm 40, Psalm 40 verse 5 says this, guys. Oh, the joys of those who trust the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud or in those who worship idols. Oh, Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. Tell somebody right now, you need to trust God. Guys, if, if you're taking notes this morning, trusting in God gives us a, a purpose that is clear. You have a purpose in life. So many people or go after the world's, get it, grow it, guard it, only to find it's empty. So they go after something else. They try to get that. They try to grow that. They try to guard that. And all of a sudden they realize, I can't do a good job. Whether it's my family, whether it's my 
popularity and whether it's my I, I just, it's just a dead end street. And God is saying, your purpose was created in me. Every person in this room, you were created by God with a unique purpose in life. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. I want you to tell somebody right now, I am God's first round draft pick. You are. Tell somebody else that. You're a first round draft pick. There are no second rounders or fifth rounders in here. You're a first round draft pick. Nobody else can play your position like you. Do you hear me? Nobody else can play your position like me, you. Psalm 37, 3 through 5 says this. Trust in the Lord. There it is. Everybody say trust. And do good. Remember, actions. Trust is actions. Then you will live safely in the land and do what? Prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you y'all, your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And trusting in God gives us a power. Trusting in God gives us a power that cannot be overcome. Every dream, I, I've been amazed at how I was going after success. I wanted to be a big music star. I wanted to have a lot of money. I, I grew up in a pastor's home. I always felt like I had less than everybody else. What I know now is I had more than everybody else because I had loving parents. I had a great church family. But as I looked at the world system that says, you need better clothes, you need a better car, you need, be you need more popularity, you need to be cool, you don't need, need to be this goofy little preacher's kid who's got to be good all the time. And so I'm going, man, I'm going to University of Miami. I'm going to become a film and TV writer. I'm going to be like David Foster producing Chicago. I'm just going to be this big dude. I'm going to play in front of a bunch of people. Everybody's going to be like, Steve Glover! Wow! And I'm going to tell you, I got good at a lot of things, but it was a dead-end street. It was dissatisfying. I'm like, okay, I'm well-known for music. I've got some financial success. And I'm like, and I would look at the church, and I'd go to church, and I, I, I was still serving God, but not surrendered, right? And I'd be like, man, there's something here that I'm missing. And y'all know what happened? It's when I surrendered and began to trust Jesus and said, Jesus, I'll give you my career, I'll give you my popularity, I'll give you my music skills, all the things that I wanted to do, play in front of big crowds, do composition music together, just uh, be a speaker and influence people. Every dream I had, every desire has been fulfilled and I've not had to sacrifice any morals or ethics or anything to get there. And I'm always amazed where I go, oh my gosh. Lord, I gave this to you, and because you love me, you gave me an opportunity to play bass here or to speak to people here, see lives change here, and I'm going, I could have never achieved that on my own. You have given me the power to do things I could have never accomplished because he loves me, and his way is the best way. And what he says is trusting in God. Guys, trusting in God brings us prosperity that does not make sense. Because the world's prosperity is, let me see your bank statement, let me see your mortgage, you know, the value of your house, let me see your likes on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, let me see all this stuff. And God is saying, watch this, 1 Timothy 6, 17. This is right to Americans. He's telling Timothy, the young Timothy, teach those who are rich in this world not to be what? Proud and not to trust in their money. Or the, the value of the world system, which is so unreliable. Do you know the economy of America could crash tomorrow? And some of you, I'm just saying it because I've been there, done that, would be devastated. Your hope would be gone. Some of you, the economy would crash tomorrow. You'd be like, it's all good. Come over to my house for biscuits. Because your hope is in the Lord and in biscuits. No, I'm just kidding about the biscuits part. The Bible goes on to say in Timothy, their trust should be in God, which richly gives us what? 
all we need for our Christianity is not the no fun league. It's the joyous league. And God is not saying that money's bad, that uh, notoriety's bad, that skills are bad, that jobs are bad. He's just saying the best thing is don't put your trust in any of that. He said, put your trust in me. Use what I've given you for the greater kingdom good. And here's what I know, guys. Trusting in God in kind gives us a passion for generosity. You cannot be a totally devoted follower of Christ and not be obsessed with giving. Now, we, some of us give finances, some of us give talent, some of us give uh, time, but, but a Christian is always going, Sarah and I, you and I were talking about it the other night. We see a need and we go, how do we fill it? How do we see? We see uh, young 20-somethings who need groups and who need uh, to have people that are ministering to them. We've been talking to people, and we saw that a couple years ago. We said, we'll start a group at our house. We didn't need another thing to do, y'all. Nope. We're not the most relevant, hip, young, whatever. But we said, we'll open our home. We'll meet and talk. When I saw the opportunity with coaching baseball, I saw young men that needed a, young, a, a man in their life. And I said, what better way to influence people than to show them you can be fun, you can have be competitive, and you don't have to be all the things the world says you need to be. It's giving. And trusting in God gives us a passion to be generous. We are obsessed with helping others. It's based on surrendered heart that is being transformed. And as we bring this home today, guys, here's the one I want you just to know. Trusting in God, we sang about it this morning gives us a peace that doesn't make sense. Romans 15, 13 says this. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you. Everybody say this next word with me. Completely. What does it mean to fill something completely? If you're going to fill a glass completely, what's probably going to happen? It's going to be overflowing. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you do what? Say it with me. You trust in Him. Then... Watch this. There's the principle. Now here's the promise. Then you will, say it with me, overflow with what? Confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, many of you this morning, like me, you come into this place with some issues, with some conflict, with some struggles, with some pain some problems, some challenges. And there's something about a child of God that is truly learning to trust God. That there becomes a peace when we truly learn to live by that Philippians 4 verse that says, don't be anxious about anything, which is hard for me as a control enthusiast. Pray about everything. And it says that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. See, the greatest thing that's at risk when we're following the world system is our heart and our mind are corrupted. And God is saying to us today, I want to overflow you with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to take your anxiety away. I want to take your frustration away. I want to take those things that are stealing your joy away. But you got to surrender and you got to trust and you got to walk in me. 
Much of my issue of starting this visionary initiative was, God, I know there are people that don't trust church leaders. I have seen the scams. I have seen the the pastors who have said one thing and done another, who have left their families and ended up in moral failure and have been in it for the money and all those kind of things. I'm so hyper aware of this. But here's what God has taught me through this, and I'm done. Through the whole process of filming and talking about this, wrestling through it with our board, God exposed something in me. And God said, Steve, you're so afraid of people that are going to reject you because you're going to present this financial piece of this. You're so afraid of the things that have been done to people in the past that you don't trust me to preach my word and let the Holy Spirit do the work. You refrain from teaching certain passages on giving, even though it's the most talked about subject in the Bible. And he said, you know what? I'm going to gently give you a spank and tell you, I forgive you for that. Now go preach the word boldly. And you know what he said? You step out of the boat. It's going to be a fun ride. I'm going to bless DC3 like you've never seen them blessed before. Trust me. Yeah. So, so. And here's why. A lot of pastors make a mistake. A lot of pastors get up and preach about trusting and giving, and they're preaching about what God wants from you. And that is a mistake by a pastor, and I've made that mistake in the past. But I want to leave you with this statement this morning. This is not about what God wants from you. This is about what God wants for you as a son and daughter. You can't really know the blessings of God until you trust him. Will you trust him? Let's pray. God, we just thank you this morning for the opportunity to grow us in a heart of trust. And there are people this morning, God, they came in with skepticism. They came in with with doubts and fears about a lot of things, about church, about God, about Christianity, about religion. Lord God, in this morning, your Holy Spirit has given them the word that says over and over and over and over again. And I just touch the peaks of some verses that talk about trusting. God, your promise is true. You want to bless us, but the principle is there. We must trust you because we're going to go through hard times. We're going to go through trials. Lord, there are going to be times when you need to grow us, that there's going to be lack. There's going to be, there's going to seemingly be the boats pulling away and not coming back for us. But God, you're just saying, trust me. If you'll just hang on to my rope, if you'll just let me pull you, let me guide you, I'm going to take you to places of growth. I'm going to see transformation. You're going to see the kingdom grow in your family, in your heart, in your community. And I believe God, as DC3 commits to be a totally devoted follower of you and say, God, I surrender. I trust you. I want to give. I don't want to get. Lord, show me this morning what that looks like. In the name of Jesus, we're going to see a community change for you. And we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. If you're here this morning, you, ha- you don't know Christ, I'm telling you, pray a prayer this morning. And say, Jesus, I'm not even sure what it looks like, but I want to trust you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I give you every sin. I give you every success. Thank you for your forgiveness. I surrender all. Let's stand together right now. I'm going to ask our prayer team to come forward. And I want us to do something right now. I just want us all to say together on the count of three, God, teach me to trust you. On three, ready? God, teach me to trust you. On three, one, two, three. God, teach me to trust you. Give somebody beside you a high five, fist bump them right now. If you need prayer for anything, having struggled with trust, come forward. God bless you. Have a great day. Let's make room for more. God bless you guys. Thank you, Jesus.